Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bosk by Floodgate Games. It is made by Daryl Andrews. It plays two to four players, takes 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Bosk, you're basically going to be placing trees, scoring points based on the areas you associate them with, and then you're going to place leaves from those trees and score points based on the area that those leaves occupy, provided you have the most leaves in each of those areas. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Fairly simple game in concept with quite a few interesting distinguishing features to it. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what's in the game, how to play around or so, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have Bosk and it's all set up for two players, but as you can see, it comes with four different color areas. So you got the red, you've got the yellow, you've got orange and purple. And if you wanna play with three or four players, you can do that. There's also a front and back side to the board that will allow you to play additional players make sure to keep all of your components in your little tin area here until you're about to play the game which you can take everything out let's go ahead and talk about all the components so there's the rule book there is the board for the game with the front and back markers like i showed you before or talked about before this is the scoring board where you're going to be moving your leaves along in each of the different stages of the game to score points and the board goes all the way to 50 and if need be you can come back around and start scoring even more points go ahead and place one of each leaf from each player on the side of the board to indicate that you'll be scoring points in the game depending on the number of players this is the win board which will be used during the second portion of the game you can leave it on the side for now but you will be placing it down based on who loses the first aspect of play every player is going to get trees they'll be getting eight of them and each of the players are going to basically be getting two ones, two twos, two threes, and two fours. These are going to basically be giving you points based on the lines or the grids on the main player board. You'll also get these little leaves here, which will take place in the second part of the game, where you're going to be placing them on the board to acquire certain areas based on the color of said areas. And if you can manage to get the most leaves in that area, you'll be scoring additional points. There's these large leaves, which are basically going to allow you to hide them face down, flip them over. Over and then do whatever they say. Most of them are going to have a number on them and that will allow you to place leaves from certain trees based on the round to acquire these spaces on the board. After that, you'll also do another scoring session. You'll be using this little dude here that walks around to score more points. And lastly, you've got these cute little squirrel tokens, which these are like the promo ones, but you could use these ones, which are the main ones in the game, to uh, obtain one specific space on the board. It's just one squirrel for one of these specific leaves on a round, but this will guarantee you to keep the spot. No squirrel can land on top of another squirrel. However, leaves can go on top of other leaves. So let's go ahead and talk about the game now. Let's talk about the first portion of the game. It's fairly simple. Players are gonna go in a turn order, placing down trees and putting them down in these little areas here, which will then have the column here and a column here. So first of all, if I wanted to, I could place this tree right here, which is gonna indicate that I have four points for this line and for this line. The next player can then go ahead and place as well. And then he'll indicate that he's got four points for this line and this line. And you're just gonna keep going back and forth until all the trees have been placed on the board. At which point you're gonna have this guy come over here and he's gonna walk from line to line following this little area here. And you're going to see whoever has the most points in each line. And you're going to score points based on if you have the most points there using these leaves. There's a rule for if you tie, and then there's a rule for if you have the most. After you go throughout this line here, this row here, you're gonna go through this row here, and then you're gonna score fully. Players are gonna have some, some amount of points like this. And the board is gonna look like something like this. I'll go ahead and just show you what the board is likely going to look like. After all the trees have placed and you've went ahead and done your scoring, which like I said before, I'll just show you one example here. If we were looking at just this line here, this purple has a one here, and then orange has a four and a one, which is five, which means this player, the orange player is gonna score this one line. You do that for all the lines. Then you're gonna to go to the next portion of the game, and based on the person who has the least amount of points, which in this case would be purple based on this score tracker, he or she is gonna to get to take this piece here, this marker here, and place it on one side of the board which is going to determine how the wind is going to be blowing throughout each of the rounds and where in which direction it's going to be blowing. And then players are going to take their leaves here, these guys here, and place them face down at the same time and then reveal them. 
The player with the least amount of points on their leaf is going to get to go first. And based on the rounds, the first four rounds, we, we started with the first one tree, then a two tree, then a three, and then a four. And then these four, so in the last four rounds, could be any tree of your choice. And the purple player is just going to simply take the amount of leaves equal to the number based on the large leaf and place these leaves in the direction of the wind based on the number of trees. So in this case, he's got a one here and he's got a one. Where's the other one? Right here. So he's got to place three leaves down, and he's going to go ahead and place them down going this way. He can place them on either side, and then he's going to place it in this direction here. And if at any point your leaves go off of the board, you just don't get them. So because there's a three and he only has these two spaces available, he'd lose this leaf. Rules for placement are pretty simple. So for instance, I'll go ahead and move this tree to give you a better example. When you place one of the leaves down in either of these locations, your next placement is going to be based on this, this direction, which is going to be down this way. And then you can place it in any of the three associated uh, spaces that are next to this leaf in front of it. So you can place a leaf here, here, or here. And then the same rule will apply for the next area, one, two, or three. So I can place that like that. These leaves are gonna occupy the colored areas and you're basically trying to get as many leaves in an area as possible to score points for the end of the game. Then of course the next player is going to go and he's gonna have these ones here and he's gonna go ahead and place these down as well. So he's gonna go ahead and look for a tree with a one. Hopefully he can find one. Here's one here. He's gonna have six different leaves. So we're gonna do this. And then we're gonna place them either one of these two spaces here, and then one of these three, one of these three, one of these three, so on and so forth. And then that would be his placement for this tree here. Additionally too, when you choose a tree to basically have leaves fall from it, make sure you remove the tree from the board because you will no longer need these trees anymore, nor can you use them in any way. And that's just gonna keep going. Once these have been played, these little tiles here, they're gonna be removed. And you're gonna keep going throughout the game using the numbers provided for you, five, seven, four, two, eight, and three. Additionally, a squirrel as well. And the squirrel will be based on either the number or a wild tree of your choice, in which case you can place it in a specific way you'll place it. But if Orange did this, he or she could go ahead and place a squirrel on top of a leaf of another player's and guarantee that spot for the end of the game. Additionally, if you want, so for instance, if we had two here, and maybe it was right here, and it was Orange's turn, and he, had, he or she had played five, he, would get, he or she would get five of these little leaves here, and then you can go ahead and place them going this way, right? So you can go either of these two spots, then either of the three based on where you placed all the way across. If you want to play on a space with additional leaves already on it, if your leaf is on top, you don't have to worry about it. You can just place it on top. But if somebody else's leaf is, you're going to need to pay your leaves from your pool of leaves that you have based on the tile you placed, in this case is five, in order to place it down. So this has one leaf, so I can place one leaf on top of it provided I pay one leaf in order to do so. If purple, for some reason, had two leaves here, I would have to place mine on top here and then get rid of two leaves from my pool, which means I only get to place three. So I can choose these three spaces and then these three spaces to play my leaves. So that is how you're going to guarantee more spots in the area in order to basically score this area at the end of the game. And as you can see now, orange has two spaces and purple only has one, which means that orange would score this green area at the end of the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. As you pull off the trees and use your leaves, Eventually you're going to run out of leaves and trees, and then you're going to tally up the spaces on the board. And it's going to be pretty simple how that looks. You're going to take off all these guys here. And then based on this example here, which I'll show you, you're going to start scoring. So if this was the end of the board, which it's not going to be, it would be much larger and many more leaves. But you look at each of the colors, green has two purple and green has one orange, so purple will win and score more points, and then orange will score the next amount of points. And then this area here would be for orange, this area here would be for purple, this area here would be a tie, and both players, I'm guessing, would score the same amount of points, and then orange would take this area, and nobody would get these areas because there's no leaves on there. And after that, you'll move up your markers based on how many points you scored, and whoever is farthest along this track is going to be the winner of the game, Bosk, a falling leaf game. Two games kind of put together into one game that kind of utilizes the first portion with the second portion. A unique little experience here. Let's come up and discuss what I think about it. So Bosk is basically a game within a game, Inception style, I suppose. But there's one game you play at the beginning, which is just placing trees down on the board, trying to acquire the lines and getting the most points in each line to score points from this little cool visitor dude here. And then after that, the next game will begin after you score. 
and you're going to be dropping leaves from the trees based on the number and based on where the wind is located. The one thing I didn't show you uh, in the game, because I'm a doofus, I suppose, is there's this little marker for the wind, and it'll basically show you what each when each round is going to begin by moving this marker. And the wind obviously changes with each round up until the fifth round where it's going to change direction, but you can choose any tree you want. So utilize that as best as you possibly can. Uh, the Let's go with the negatives. Only two negatives I really have for this game. And the first negative for the game is... Not necessarily negative, but something you should be really aware of. You're going to need to realize that what you do for the first portion of the game is going to matter directly with the second portion. And you have to think of not only scoring lines, but additionally making sure your trees are in the correct spaces at the end of the game during the point which you're dropping leaves in order to win that round as well. So just because you place the best in the first portion of the game does not mean you're going to win the second portion, in which case you can lose the game because of that. So do keep that in mind. Certain players are definitely going to be like, ah, if only I would have understood that. Secondly is when you're doing scoring for the two phases, it's not necessarily overly complex scoring, it's actually rather simple, but it's hard to remember. If you look in the book here for the first round of scoring, you're going to have to see, okay, number of players in first place, number of players in second, how many points are going to be awarded for first place based on that scenario, and how many points will be awarded for second. So I'll just go ahead and tell you one. If one player is in first place and one is in second, you'll score two points for first place and one point for second. If one player is in first place and two players or more are, for se are, are in second, three points for the for, uh, two points for the first player, zero points for second. And it'll do that for four times, and that's how that scores. And then the next phase of scoring is actually different, and it scores in a different way as well, and you can look at it like that. So you're probably going to need to look at the book each time you go through scoring. It would have been my, probably, probably nice to have a little player reference card or something like that just so that I didn't have to go and check the book each time for each phase of scoring. Maybe somebody with a little bit better memory than mine would be able to easily deduce what scoring requires in this game. It's not, like I said, too much, but it's for some reason it just it goes over my head each time. Uh, another thing to note, which is neither a negative or a positive, but just remember when you're playing the game, this is for two players, and then this is for three and four. And this line here will indicate if you're playing with three players that you don't play outside the line when it comes to the first phase of the game. And then for the second phase of the game, you, uh, for the four, for, uh, and then, sorry, for the four player variant, you will add this, which means you can place trees on these areas as well. So the board just gets bigger and bigger. Do take note of that. All right, positives now, which is there's many. First of all, the game is beautiful. It looks really great. The artwork is excellent. The board does start filling up with trees and starts getting more and more beautiful as the trees start popping up. And it has that thematic aspect of the leaves falling and the trees dying and going away. And covering the areas up with your leaves are more important. It's not always best to have the most leaves in certain areas as it is more likely the best to strategically place your leaves in different areas to score points. There's a little squirrel that is added. Super cute. I recommend getting the uh, promo version or whatever it is compared to the basic one. Basic one's just fine, but this one, I don't know. It's just bigger and has a cute little, like, imprint on it of a squirrel and this guy will just stomp on a space and you'll control it and that space could cost anywhere from nothing to almost four leaves so using that squirrel wisely will definitely pay off and give you an area to control the game is quick and once you've played it once you're not going to need to look at the rule book ever again except for when you score the game Overall component quality is excellent. The game is really fun and it plays very well for two to four players. Anybody who likes puzzle games, likes the strate strategy of placement and deducing where players are gonna play next, where they're gonna have their leaves fall and how you need to control areas, you're going to like this game. And the fact that there's two basic area control games in one that utilize each other in a nice uh, symmetrical, that's wrong, synonymous? So not, so, yeah, well, they synchronize with each other? I, I don't know the word for it, but they work together in tandem. I also don't know if that's right. Regardless, though, they play together. And that's a really cool aspect I don't see a lot of games doing. Boss is a great game. If you're interested, do check out down below in the description. You can go ahead and pick up the game on Amazon using my link. I think it is on Amazon. I don't know. It'll be somewhere for you guys to pick up. But overall, I really enjoyed the game. Daryl Andrews, well done. Uh, a very, very nice game. And I think somebody else also did it too. Erica Boyoris. I hope I said that name right. Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys next time when, when the leaves fall again. I mean, my wife's going to keep this game. We're going to be playing this game a lot. And I suck at it, but well, I'll see you next time.